Chalk paint is really popular these days for a lot of DIY home decor and craft projects. The biggest thing that sets chalk paint apart from other paints is that it has a very soft matte finish. You can see here, right? It's very soft, super matte. It looks like the surface is covered in downy, soft, and luxurious chalk. The paint surface is matte, so ultra flat with no sheen and no glare to it. So it's smooth, cozy, and perfect for home decor. And I do want to point that out that chalk paint is not the same as chalkboard paint, which is a totally different paint that allows you to write with chalk and then erase it completely. So chalk paint is different than chalkboard paint. Instead, chalk paint is really just paint with chalk in it or something chalk-like. And it's right mixed right into the paint. It's a latex paint, so it will go on to nearly any surface without a bunch of prep. And it's really easy to clean up with water. You don't have to prime or sand your surface in advance to use it, which is probably one of the reasons we love it. It's very forgiving paint, thanks in part to its ultra matte finish. So it's perfect for beginners and so many of the projects that we do together. The biggest drawback to chalk paint is its availability, availability especially in the exact color we want. Annie Sloan, the inventor of chalk paint back in the 90s, has just 42 colors of chalk paint. Folk art, which is right here, has about 70 colors. And while that's a lot, it's still not every color that we're going to want, right? And even if we do find the exact color that's, you know, that for our project, the chances of us finding that one at the craft store is a little chancy, right? You know how it goes. You really want it, you go there, it's not on the shelf. So some people, like me, turn to making their own homemade chalk paint. One of the first times I ever used chalk paint was about seven years ago when I wanted to refinish a desk and I couldn't find the chalk paint anywhere and it's definitely not in the cherry red that I wanted to use. So I made it myself and it turned out fantastic. It was my office desk that I used to start Jennifer Maker, in fact. So I thought I would show you how to make your own homemade chalk paint because it's really a lot easier than you think it might be. Now there's actually a bunch of different ways to do it in fact, and I'm gonna share all the ways that I know of and the one that I think is the best. Now to make your own chalk paint, you need flat latex paint in the color you want, which is, where's my paint? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna bring everything over. Flat latex paints, right? So just go to your local hardware store or your home improvement store, Pick out a paint chip in the color you want and ask them to mix you up some flat latex paint. Uh, you can choose any color, but it's important that you get flat paint. Not satin, not semi-gloss, not high gloss, but flat paint. We're going for a super flat finish, so we want to start with flat paint. You'll also want some water, so I just, <laughs> you can use tap water. This is the water that was easiest to bring to my table today. <laughs> and... You're gonna want, of course, to protect your surface, so something out, um, some gloves, so that you don't get paint all over, in case, unless you don't care, but you know, I care. Um, I also recommend these clear cups, just like this. We're going to use these for mixing. Um, you, you can use your own measuring cups, and I've got, I'm actually, I've got all my measuring cups here, but you aren't going to want to use these uh, to mix anything in, right? Um, and some ingredients, you know, you want to be cautious about. So you can use these things, but you're not going to want to mix in them. So what we're, I'm going to use these clear ones. And then you're also going to want a Sharpie to mark them as you work on them. Okay. And then uh, some stir sticks, a spoon, that kind of thing. So here's all of our tools. Here's our paint. And here's my, my paint chips. These are all of our awesome colors today. Because remember, we can have any color we want, which is really cool. Our gloves, some water. Not all the recipes call for water. Um, a couple of them do, though. So I have some water here. But hey, you know, also good for a little cleanup if you have to. Because we're using latex paint. So we can clean it up with uh, water. We don't have to use mineral spirits or anything like that. So is that everything here? Um, I think so. You might want to have the, your measuring cups on hand also. All right. Then we need the magic chalky ingredient. <laughs> there are actually different ones you can use, and we're going to attempt to try them all today to see which one we like the best. So 
let's actually bring them out one by one. And I've got the recipes and then I'm going to put them on the screen as we work with them. So this is just a, this is like a messy hands-on project. So I'm going to put on my gloves right now. Feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. I don't pretend to be an expert about chalk paint, everybody. I, I am a user of chalk paint. Uh, I'm not the inventor of chalk paint. Again, that's Annie Sloan. I believe she's trademarked the name chalk paint. So, you know, this is our homemade version of it. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble or anything. I don't know if that's a problem, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Annie Sloan. I'm just making some chalk paint then and showing you how to do it so that you can make it at home. Because I love the idea that we can have any color we want. And honestly, you might have some latex flat paint already in your house and you might have some of these ingredients already in your house. So you could actually do it right now. So we're going to do, we're going to start. I have four recipes to show today. The first one uses baking soda. That's right. So I'm going to put up the recipe. Here we go. Chalk paint recipe number one, two parts latex paint. And I've prepared, here's our paint and one part baking soda. And here's our baking soda. Now I've, I, I got everything ready in advance so that I wouldn't make a mistake. That's the goal here. But I want to show you how I'm using these cups because it's really kind of awesome. So I'm going, to, I'm going to try switching to another camera I have to see if it shows better. It does. So what I've done is in advance, I have using a cup of water, I measured out all the spots on my, my, my cup so that I'm hoping that I get the right amounts. And so I'm doing it in advance. And because I can see through it, I just use my Sharpie marker to do it. Uh, I'll be able to see as I work. So I highly recommend this, right? You don't want to mix in your measuring cups. Don't use these. These are for your kitchen, right? Uh, they'll be ruined. I mean, I guess you could use them, but they'll be ruined. Um, instead, use these just clear cups, right? And you can, and let me in fact show you um, with one how I did it because it's actually really easy. Just in case it's not obvious. So here is my cup right here. I know it's very light. I'm going to see if I can turn my brightness down a little bit there. Hang on a second. It's a little less bright. You can see a little better. Okay. So here is my cup, put that right there. So what I did was I know my recipe, right? And you can use this for as little or as much as you want. So I just got out some water and in this case, um, let's see. Oh, I used a quarter cup, right? Um, so I first marked a half a cup and then a quarter cup. So I poured in a half a cup of water into my measuring cup. And by the way, these are really nice measuring cups. If you've never used this kind that's got this like sloped on it. It's the best. I love these. They're OXO brands. Okay. And then we pour in our water just like this. Get it all out there. And then we just, we can see right at the side here, exactly what our, where our measurement is. So we just mark it. And now we don't have to measure again. I can put another quarter cup in there. And if I do that, that will tell me exactly, I'm not gonna do it, but you get the idea, right? It'll tell you exactly what you need. So let's set this over here. I don't wanna spill it. <laughs> so here I have prepared it in advance. So this recipe is uh, baking soda. Let me switch my camera over here. Uh, baking soda, chalk paint, right? So two, two parts paint to one part baking soda. So here's our paint. We're gonna pour this in carefully. I could have just kept it in that cup, but you probably are pouring from something else. So I'm doing my best to simulate it. So let's get out our spoon here and try to get most of it. This is pretty thick paint, right? So if you're doing it this way, you might need to get extra. It's nice, this is nice paint. I'm actually, for those who are curious, you, you can use any latex paint. Um, we just picked ours up at our local Ace hardware store and we have uh, Benjamin Moore flat finish paint. All right, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna see, let's, let's play a game. Let's see how clean I can keep my butcher paper, shall we? <laughs> All right, so, you can see here that I did a pretty good job. We are at but the right spot. Okay, so now let's put in our baking soda and I'm just gonna put this in and then we're gonna mix it up, okay? 
get my make sure I got my gloves on. Okay, so here's our baking soda. So again, two parts latex paint to one part baking soda, right? So I've got half a cup of latex paint and a quarter cup of baking soda. Uh, this is tapered, so it's it is. Let's just make sure I don't want to be wrong. I'm double checking my work. I don't know. That seems like more than half a cup. I think I need to check my work. I think I need to check my work. Where is my cup? I'm going to use this. I already used this one. So we're going to double check that I have a quarter cup. I don't want to get this wrong. So I'm going to show you. This is so cool. These are, see, do you see how they've got these marks right in here? So we can just go like this and then... There, that's a quarter cup. So I had a little bit more. I don't know what I was thinking. Who knows? Okay, there we go. But you know, because I marked the side, I would have known, right? I would have known that I had too much. So let's pour in our baking soda. So I think of this as like, you know, this is the, oh my gosh, I need some chalk paint right now version of, of uh, doing this. And then we stir just like this. And it's going to take a fair amount of stirring to get it. And the whole idea is that we're creating a more matte, softer finish to our paint. There we go. We want to mix it up really good. And we're, by the way, we're going to test each one of these as we go along. So this looks lovely. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's a little lumpy. I think I could stir it for longer to get a smoother finish, but you get the idea, right? So we'll set this aside and we'll move on to our next one. But this is just latex paint and baking soda. So super easy, super easy. You can see it's thicker than it would normally be, right? So let's set this right. Actually, before I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna paint with it while it's fresh and I'll explain later why. So let me find my canvas. Here's our canvas. Here's our brush. And I'm just going to paint a little stripe down one side. When you do chalk paint, I recommend that you, oh, oh we got we to gotta meet our challenge and not get any drips on the table. I'm not really that neat and tidy, guys. Anyone will tell you that. Okay. So I recommend when you paint with chalk paint that you paint in the same direction. I don't care if it's up and down, side to side. It might matter, of course, if you're painting a piece of wood. When you're painting a piece of wood, you'll want to go in the direction of your grain. Always paint with the direction of your grain. All right. So there we go. We'll let that dry so you can see what it looks like. But you can see it looks nice and uh, nice and it looks very pretty right now. Okay. So we're going to set this somewhere else before that's a catastrophe. <laughs> All right. So let's set this to the side. It shouldn't drip or anything like that because it's nice and thick. All right. Wasn't that awesome? Cindy says, can you put glitter in the paint? I don't see why not. You can totally put glitter in the paint. Go for it. All right. So our next recipe is going to be, put this one away. Recipe number two, let me move that up too. I need that covered up my head. Um, is using grout, unsanded white grout. Let me show you what this looks like. We also got this from uh, Ace just this morning, right before we came, because I don't just have this sitting around most of the time. Um, they'll sell it pretty much at any hardware store, home improvement store. It's important that it be white. They do come in different colors. If you get something other than white, it can change the color of your paint, okay? And I have this one ready right here. So we only need one part of the grout to eight parts of paint, okay? Now the grout should be mixed with water before we add it, just a little bit, just to make it pasty, grouty. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water in here Mix it up. I'm gonna. I'm doing it to uh, not to taste, but you know, to feel and look. We just want to make it look more like grout. 
So I'm just mixing it up here. That looks pretty good. I put it in just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to put it into our yellow paint. Again, this is just latex paint, basic latex flat paint. I'm going to use a spoon. That's going to be much more efficient than this little stick. I feel like I'm doing a cooking show, except I'm not. <laughs> I feel like that would be a lot, a cooking show, it'd be a lot of work. I, I definitely understand why they get all of their ingredients prepared in advance because there's no way, like when you're actually cooking, it's just a giant mess. There's stuff everywhere, ingredients everywhere, packages. You can't find stuff. You can't find your measuring spoons. You know, <laughs> you know how that works. Okay, we get as much of it as we can. Again, we could have simply poured all of this into one of the, we could have put the paint in here, vice versa, whatever, whatever works for you. But remember, we're mixing it outside of, um, and I'll, I'm going to use my little, my little, um, set this over here. I'm going to use my little popsicle stick. I think it's going to do a better job. Let's get that all mixed up. So this will require quite a bit of stirring to really get that mixed in there. Are you guys sharing your tips? Alisa says, I just use flat ceiling or all paint. Same thing. Yes. Flat ceiling would, ceiling paint would be is a great thing to use. Absolutely. The key is to use flat paint. Um, and all the stores will have it. It's not like special paint or anything like that. Uh, we use flat paint in our houses on our ceilings. And most people also use them on, um, they use, either use flat or like eggshell on the walls. I like to use flat paint on my walls because it hides all the imperfections. I find the shinier you get, the more imperfections you see. That has been my experience. And so the older your walls, uh, the more likely you are to see every little divot or whatever in your wall. Okay, doing good so far. So here is our grout chalk with quotey fingers paint. So let's try putting this one on. And I think I only have three brushes. So if Greg is listening, would Greg come here and help me clean one of my brushes for me? <laughs> All right, so let's put our yellow on. And it's so, it's nice and thick. You see here, spread that out. There we go. And it's definitely going to have that uh, chalky look. That's what we're going for. So all of these recipes I'm showing you so far are, you know, things that we can use that are simple to find because the availability of, of products is a challenge, all right? So that's our grout. Put the brush over here so we don't make a mess. And let me show you what that looks like, right? So right away we can see that it doesn't have as doesn't have that it doesn't have as good coverage, right, as our baking soda does, right? We can see the lines in our yellow there, and yellow is not even a dark color. So imagine if this were darker. So right off the bat, baking soda is winning as far as I'm concerned. I like one coat if I can manage it. One coat makes me happy. <laughs> I know that's not always possible, but Okay, our next recipe then, let's put this one away, is using plaster of Paris. That's right. So let me show you plaster of Paris that you can find at a craft store or online. Looks just like this stuff here. I'm sure you've seen it before. This is the brand of plaster of Paris. Um, so this, it's just regular old plaster of Paris. It's very powdery. I've already got some measured out for us. So it looks just like this, right? So we're going to use three parts of paint. Here's our paint to one part plaster of Paris and one part water. So we're going to add the water to the plaster of Paris first, and then we're going to put it into our cup. So I've already, in fact, remember I, here is our, it's all measured and ready for us to go. 
So I'm just gonna pour in my water until it gets to that line. Hey, could you clean one of these brushes? I need four brushes, thank you. So I'm gonna pour it in, up to that line. There we go. Now we mix it. Again, you don't have to use your smart water. <laughs> you don't have to use smart water for this. It was just easier, it's just what I have. Tap water is perfectly fine, just so that's clear. So there's our Plaster of Paris mixed up. So again, it's three parts paint, one part plaster of Paris, and one part water. Get it all, there we go. Um, again, you know, the smoother, the more you mix, the smoother result you're gonna get, okay? With all of these that we're doing. So mixing is a big deal. So if you ever don't like it, mix some more. Okay, so now let's add, we're doing good so far, look, I haven't made any messes yet. All right, so let's, um, I'm just gonna add it right to this cup. There's no reason to transfer it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel like I'm making like a green milkshake or something. It doesn't look very good though, I gotta admit. It doesn't, it doesn't look appetizing. All right, now we mix. <laughs> Lynn says, I would watch you cooking. <laughs> you know, I used to love, love, love cooking. Like love. I, I, I actually won some awards for cooking. Um, it was probably one of my first, uh, besides sewing, I would say it was one of my first loves. Uh, but then as I got older and my life got busier and my daughter started offering to cook more, I happily relinquished the kitchen to her. Uh, so I don't cook anywhere near as much as I used to, but I love cooking, especially baking. I love to bake. All right, so there we go. Three parts paint, one part plaster of Paris, one part water. Thank you, Greg. So right away, I feel like this is pretty runny, right? So I'm just gonna say right away, I, um, but we know, whatever, this is very drippy too. So we're gonna move this one over right away. There we go. So there is our green paint and this is our plaster chalk paint, okay? Let's see how it goes onto our canvas. So here's our canvas, move this over here. Get out our brush. Okay, so let's see here. It's definitely not as thick. I feel like maybe I need to stir it more. It feels to me like it's just, I'm gonna make sure I'm getting down to the bottom there. And then, you know, sometimes when you're making these things, you might need to fiddle with your recipes. I know I've done it many times. I'm getting down to the bottom. So, you know, maybe it's just not as thick. In the end, what matters is how it looks, right? Okay. So again, so you can see what it looks like. This is it. It's not quite as thick, right? Let's put it on our canvas. It's so pretty though. But yeah, it's definitely runnier than like normal chalk paint is. But the thing about being plaster of Paris is that it's going to harden in maybe about an hour, and you're basically putting a thin coat of plaster onto your surface. It's harder to get it smooth, right? So less paint, like if I had this whole canvas to use, I would be spreading this amount of paint out a lot more than I am. So, because this is just too much paint right here. So I think that it, this would definitely require two coats too. I'll try to get it as smooth as I can though. All right, so that is our Plaster of Paris chalk paint. All right, let's make room for our final one, which is not, it's not gonna surprise you, I think, to know that this is the one that I like the best. But, so, let's put our, this recipe away. And our final recipe is the actual chalk paint recipe. This is the one that I've always used. And this uses calcium carbonate, which is this right here. Let's move this out. This is calcium carbonate. Um, so the problem and the reason why these other recipes exist is frankly because it's difficult to find calcium carbonate. 
Um, it isn't like for sale at the craft store. You can definitely order it from Amazon, but you gotta wait. So for example, I only had the idea to do this yesterday. <laughs> so I'm like, let's show everybody how to make chalk paint. Like I make it. Well, calcium carbonate is hard to, to locate. So we have these other options, right? Um, we find here in Ann Arbor, we go to a pottery store, um, Rowan Ceramics, right? And they they use it for, for whitening things, right? It's like a white, whitening agent. Um, you might also be able to get it at a health food store because people use it as a health supplement. Now it needs to be powder, right? So let me show you what it looks like. It looks like white powder. This isn't going to surprise you, but calcium carbonate. And you know what that means? This is chalk. This is just chalk that's been um, powdered up. Now you don't want to go get a piece of chalk and attempt to crush it. It's got other things in it, okay? The chalk that they sell at the store. Um, you also don't wanna get the calcium carbonate that comes in like tablet form at the health food store. Also, it's gonna have other things in it to bind it and stuff like that. You want 100% pure calcium carbonate to do this, or carbonate, I don't know how to pronounce that word. So, uh, this is the good stuff, okay? So if you can't find this, these other things are options. But this is what, if you are able to, this is what you want to use. So here is our pre-mixed quarter cup of calcium carbonate. Here is our red paint, okay? It's right here. And I'm gonna just mix everything into here. We've got our, I've got everything all ready to go right here. So it's two parts of paint. Again, flat latex paint to one part of calcium carbonate, carbonate, carbonate. It's funny when, you know, so Greg went over literally right before uh, our live party started today. They opened at noon. Our party started at noon. We're very fortunate that this worked out. Uh, so he went over right before and, you know, he's like, is it calcium citrate? I'm like, no, it's calcium carbonate, carbonate. You know, just think like Han Solo. <laughs> And that, but that's not carbonate. It's something, it's carbonate. It's something else. It's carbon, whatever. Anyways, so, but yeah, it's, if you need help remembering which one it is, think Han Solo, because he was frozen in carbon, right? What was it, what was it called? Carbon, carbon something. Does anyone remember? Uh, Denise says, when you say equal parts, can you tell what those parts are on your tutorial? So today, right now, I'm using a half a cup of paint and a quarter cup of calcium carbonate, right? The reason why I list it as parts is because you might need a tiny little bit or you might need a gallon, right? So it's much better for me to tell you the parts rather than the sizes so that you can use, in my opinion, personally, so you can use the, what works for you and your recipe. When I was doing my desk, which was a color not dissimilar from this, I had like a couple quarts or something. It was because it's a big desk. Maybe a quart. I don't remember what I had. I had quite a bit though. Okay, so let's get out our... I don't want to spill. Okay, so let's pour in our calcium carbonate, our chalk, the real stuff. There we go. And put all of our paint away and mix it. So this is what most chalk paint is that you buy at the store. Um, you know, maybe there's something else in it for shelf life or something, but it should just be latex paint and chalk. It's just like before you want to stir it really well. It'll be nice and thick when we're done. Nancy says, how long will these paints last? So that is an excellent question. And it's very important because here's the thing. Only this one that I'm making right now will last beyond today. The others are already starting to get icky, as a matter of fact. We're using things that set and get hard. Baking soda, grout, and plaster. So they're okay when you first, if, you want, if you're making them fresh for your project, totally fine. If you just need to add a little thickening agent to some things so that for your project, just go grab some baking soda or, you know, what, or unsanded grout <laughs> or blaster, whatever you have, but you are going to end up throwing it away when you're done. You're not going to be able to save it. 
if you use the calcium carbonate, you're going to get to save it in an airtight container, right? So you can use it again for your next project or for touch-ups or for whatever you need it for. So you can make a bunch of your own chalk paints with your own special signature color and keep it in an airtight jar and you'll be, it'll work. Okay. So there we go. Here is our lovely chalk paint. Doesn't that look awesome? Looks kind of like ketchup. I really feel like we are. Oops. I can see I missed a little bit there. Oh, I need, however, a new, a new stick. Cause I got a little, I got a little, um, I'm going to use a spoon. I don't want to mix my paints, right? I, I noticed I set it aside and I got a little green paint on it. So let's make sure we got this, all the sides here, all cleared off. There we go. I don't want little bits of powder on our project. Okay. That's good. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's how we will get paint everywhere. So don't forget your paper towels, right? Even like a wet paper towel is good to have nearby so that you avoid transferring uh, paint. Just like glitter, it, paint can get everywhere. Okay, you can get it dry. That's usually good enough, right? Okay. Let's get out our canvas. Here it is. And let's paint our red our proper chalk paint. It's nice and thick. You see that? It doesn't run. It's really nice. Let's put it on. And it's so lovely. <laughs> I love chalk paint. It goes on really nice. Really like, oops, let's move this over here. You can't quite see this. Really awesome coverage. I'm not seeing any of the canvas through it. It looks great. Okay. And here is what it looks like. You see the differences between these? So of course we've got some drying time here. So keep that in mind. This is our baking soda. This is our grout right here. This is our, it's very fresh. This is our plaster Paris chalk paint. And this is our calcium carbonate, our proper chalk paint. Uh, you can already see how much better this one is than this one. Um, this one, however, the baking soda looks really good, don't you think? It's, it's, uh, it's already dried really nicely, and it looks really good. All right, so we'll give this a little more time to dry. I have a feeling this one here, is, this green one here is going to take a while. And let me put all of the recipes up on the screen if you want to take a screenshot of these. This would be a good time to do it. Let me make sure that you can see everything. There we go. Yeah, I actually put these all the way up here. We need not cover up anything. I will put all of this onto my blog over at jennifermaker.com. It's just not there yet because I didn't even know how well this would turn out. Um, okay, so I'm happy to share questions or answer your questions. Okay, let's see here. Um, what is my favorite color of chalk paint? Uh, Brenda is asking that. Well, I painted my desk red when I did it. So red and red is my favorite color. So this, I would say, uh, we actually matched these all to the Jennifer Maker brand colors. You probably recognize those. Uh, so red is my favorite color. I also really love turquoise. Those are my, um, my two favorite colors, but red is my number one favorite color. And I, since you always ask me about paint colors, <laughs> um, which is totally makes sense because when you see a paint color, you're like, well, I want that one, right? Uh, we got the paint chips for everything so that I'm going to, and I'm going to tell you what each one is. So this red one here, right here is called Ruby Red and it's a Benjamin Moore paint. So when you go to your paint department, you can say you want Ruby Red from Benjamin Moore and they have databases that can look up exactly what the different pigments are to make that. Okay, so Ruby Red, I'll set that there. The green is called Tropical Seaweed Green. The This yellow, which is really, supposed to be more like a yellow. Well, I guess it's, I guess it's the yellow. We're going for orange, but yellow is what we got. Um, it's called Golden Nugget. Again, Benjamin Moore. All of these are Benjamin Moore paints because that's what Ace was selling when we went. And then the blue is called Aruba Blue. 
and it's really pretty, isn't it? So those are all of our paints. Again, you can use whatever paint you want. That's the super cool about this thing. If you want to like match your decor perfectly, you make your own, own chalk paint and you get to have whatever you want. Uh, Linda says, is the homemade chalk paint much different than store-bought? Um, I personally think this one right here, the, the one that's made with the calcium carbonate is identical. Uh, it's just cheaper. <laughs> that would be the difference. And you got to do it yourself. You got to make it yourself. But, you know, maybe they're putting something in there, but the only thing they're going to put in there might be something to keep it more stable during shipping or when it's sitting on the shelf for years, because sometimes that happens, right? So ours is freshly made, right? And that's that's the only thing. But it's definitely different than these, right? So these are not made with chalk, but this one here is. Tammy says, can you add fine glitter or mica powder? Yeah, you can add them really to any paints. They sell them at Lowe's and Menards. I've seen them there. So yeah, you can absolutely add those things. Just add them when you're mixing. I don't know what amounts to put in there. I have not put glitter on my walls and I don't intend to, so I'm not sure, but I think it would be really pretty for a craft project. Uh, Lisa says, does chalk paint hold up as well as regular paint? Uh, so I think that it holds up really well, but if it's in like a high traffic area, so like a, on a floor or, you know, you got it like a place that's going to be constantly touched or brushed or whatever, you're going to want to seal it. And they actually make special wax to put over chalk paint. And you can buy that. I don't know how to make that one because I've never used it. When I made my desk, I didn't want anything on it. Um, and I used that. I only recently switched to a different desk and only because I wanted a white desk instead of a red desk. In fact, I want to show you a picture of my desk because it's so cool. Let's see if I can bring that up. I think it turned out really lovely. And you can then see something I made with chalk paint. Um, so I'm just going to go to Jennifer Maker. And um, I think I just searched for chalk paint is how I found it before. Because I actually put that right on there. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Maybe not. It's a very old project. It's before there was a Jennifer Maker. Let's try desk. And I will show you what it looks like when I find it. I'm still looking for it. I might have to actually go to my blog and search. It's a, what it is, is a desk that I found on the side of the road and here it is. Okay. So let me switch over to my web browser and let me put away my recipes. I'll bring them up later if we need them. All right. So this is my desk. Isn't that pretty? So this was a, a foyer, uh, like, um, console table. We found it on the side of the road and Greg chopped the legs down. There's actually a whole little story here. This is what it looked like. Uh, we found this at a time when we had basically no money. <laughs> so we were upcycling everything so we could still have beautiful things. So we chopped the legs off of this and then I painted it with chalk and look how lovely that is. Isn't it beautiful? So that was, this is the desk that Jennifer Maker was founded on. I used this for a long time. You can see I distressed all of the edges. One of the really cool things about chalk paint is that you can just take some sandpaper afterwards and you can distress the edges and you get this really rustic look. We don't tend to do that too much uh, with our craft projects on it that I made <laughs> for, for my games and for Japan and for Disney and stuff like that. So, and there, and there it is. So that's my desk. Isn't it cute? I think it's, I, I've always really liked this desk. We still have it. I'm just... I, I need a bigger desk, so it's not quite wide enough anymore. I still have two monitors on my, I actually have three now, so not, not, not two. That's why I need a bigger one. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy that you like it. Uh, it's a really cool desk. And we put all the keyboard tray in and everything. Okay, um, let's see here. Jacqueline says, can you add other colors of latex paint, like from small craft bottles to large gallons of paint to change the color? So um, typically, yes, so long as we're all, you know, everything is acrylic, latex, acrylic, right? You could do that. Um, what you need to be cautious of is if any of your paint has a black pigment in, which you may or may not know, right? Um, if it's a darker paint, it probably has black pigment in it. 
So if there's black pigment in it and you try to mix it with another color, you might end up with a totally different color, usually like a kind of muddy color that you didn't really intend. So I think mixing paint tends to work best with lighter colors if you know, and hoping to get the color that you want. So yes. So what you can do is so that you don't waste all your paint is mix a little bit, right? And just a little cup, a little, you know, on a little plastic plate to see if they're going to mix okay before you go and mix all of them. And remember that whenever we mix paint, you know, if you have a gallon and you're putting a little bottle of paint in there, chances are you're not going to get a, affect much of a change, right? So you really need a uh, fairly big quantities of paint to mix to see a, a color change unless you know it's white and you're putting in black then you're going to see the color change <laughs> uh, if you have a latex allergy what can you use it instead i don't actually know does anyone in chat and chat know what you could use i didn't uh, i don't know i mean we're using latex paint on our walls um, normally, most houses have latex paint. I don't actually know if latex paint is an allergy issue for people with latex allergies. I don't think it is. One of my nieces has a latex allergy and I'm pretty sure they're just using regular paint on their walls. So you might just want to protect yourself from the paint as you're working with it, right? That might, that, you know, make sure you're wearing nitrile gloves, not latex gloves. You probably already know that, but I use nitrile gloves pretty much all the time. I don't use rubber or latex. Um, I so I just don't know. I'd have to research latex allergies to know. And I think it would also de depend on your severity too. Cindy says, when you painted your desk, did you have to seal it with anything when you were done? I did not. I did not seal it at all. I wanted a more rustic look. So I was fine if any of it like, you know, became more weathered or wore off over time. But the thing is, it never did. So it actually looks as good now as it did the day. Uh, the the paint is so it looks so lovely and soft. It's really nice. Um, I really it's a really nice desk. So yeah, I didn't seal it at all. If you're putting chalk paint on a floor, you definitely would want to seal that. If you're putting it on anything, any kind of surface that's gonna like like just have a lot of high traffic, you'd want to seal it with wax. Uh, Joe says when you iron on vinyl onto a canvas with the chalk paint. Will the canvas melt? Nope, nope, you're totally fine to do that. We do recommend, however, that you protect your heat press from the chalk paint. Um, so in a tutorial tonight, you'll see that I put a piece of, uh, I think it was parchment paper, could have been butcher paper, but I put something over it to protect it when you put your press on so that the paint doesn't come off onto your press. But the other way around, it won't be hurt. It'll be just fine. Uh, Debbie says, do you recommend regular paint brushes over foam brushes? Yes. So for doing nice chalk paint, I recommend the brush that I was using. Actually, I recommend a bristle, um, nylon brush. I think that works the best for putting chalk paint onto something, but a foam brush, which sometimes can be easier to find are also just fine. And these can go on really smoothly. Right, so especially for like our can, we used a foam brush for our canvases. You can see how lovely and smooth they are. Let me show you. So you can see, it's got little, little things on it, sorry. <laughs> little glitter and stuff, but do you see how lovely that is? I'm trying to see if I can get it to shine. It. There's no glare whatsoever. It's just sort of, you just kind of fall into it, right? It's like a snow drift or something like that. <laughs> it's got a really uh, soft look to it. And it's because it's so smooth, right? It's great for putting our iron on vinyl on, right? So it's not bumpy or anything like that. It's really pretty. And these don't have any kind of sealer on them or anything like that, right? They're just, they're just um, painted and then we put on our iron on vinyl and that's it. Uh, okay, Cal says, do you have to put something on the metal before painting it? You don't have to, but we did paint uh, these with a little gold paint. And I think I got all your questions. So let's take one final look at our paint and see how it did. It's been, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the canvas again, and then we're gonna take a look at the paints themselves that are sitting over there, okay? So here is our painted canvas. Here is, our baking soda chalk paint. 
Here's our plaster of Paris chalk paint. He, sorry, a grout. This is one is our grout chalk paint. This is our plaster of Paris. The green one's our plaster of Paris. And the red one is our bona fide calcium carbonate chalk paint. And I'm gonna try to, you know, they're, they're not dry, obviously. Uh, three of them look like they're close. That The green one definitely is not. But I want you to see how really beautiful, actually, the blue one and the red one are. So uh, those are, with, based on this particular test, uh, this one is my favorite. The calcium carbonate chalk paint is definitely my favorite. Uh, but uh, this is the baking soda would be uh, the second favorite, followed by the grout, which I think means going to need more than one coat. And then the last place is plaster of Paris. Now let's look at the paint itself. So you need to put them into a different order. You need to go in the proper order. There we go. So here is our baking soda. It's still paintable. It's, it's, uh, I don't know how long this will last, but probably at least an hour or two more before it starts to get icky. It will eventually get really crumbly, okay? And it won't, it, even if you put it in an airtight container, it won't last beyond today, okay? So you, when you want to use baking soda chalk paint, you, you make it fresh. Here is our grout, also still looking pretty good, but I want you to know how thick it's gotten, <laughs> it's going to be a lot harder to paint with, right? It's really thick and pretty soon it's going to probably just be solid. Here is our plaster of Paris paint. Still very liquid. I really feel like it's got too much water in it. I think that if I were to make this again, like I would fiddle more with the recipe. I got this recipe. On, in fact, I wanted to give credit to where I got the recipe from. I actually used some recipes. Give me a second. Um, because I only ever use the calcium carbonate. Hang on a second. I want to give credit to the person. Um, a, a fellow blogger put her recipes on her page. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully I can recognize it. <laughs> and I can't. It's like an older blog post too. I don't even know if she's active anymore. But... Uh, yeah, none, none of these look right. So I don't remember who it is. So I will, I will find it and I will credit it in my description of my YouTube video. It's important to credit those things. So, but it was a fellow blogger. So, but I, I've always been happy with the calcium carbonate one. So that's the one I use. And so here is the calcium carbonate. Still looking awesome. Still ready to go. And it will remain so until, uh, as long as you put it in an airtight container, you'll be able to reuse it. Um, you know, for quite a while, like, you know, years, you should be fine with years. Um, these three, however, mm -mm, right, these are going to go into the trash. <laughs> Remember to dispose of your paint safely, <laughs> according to your, your local, your local safety laws. All right, I think that's it, right? So the big thing I want everyone to remember about these different recipes is that the only one you can store and use again is the actual chalk paint that we made with calcium carbonate. All of the others will harden within hours and become too thick to paint with. But the one that I made with the calcium carbonate, my personal favorite, will last in an airtight container so that you can use it again or do touch-ups or whatever you wanna do. Um, I hope that you found this helpful, maybe entertaining, I don't know. Hey, look, and I didn't make any messes. <laughs> uh, but feel free uh, to um, ask any questions below this video and I hope you feel more confident to make your own homemade chalk paint in any color you want. If you have any questions, I also recommend you come on over to my crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We would be happy to help. We have lots of people who use lots of chalk paint and it's a very friendly and helpful place. 